John Lehner. I'm the Director of Business Development here at LinkPoint 360. And one of the things that we're going to go over today is the LinkPoint Connect for SalesLogix software, which will provide an, a tighter integration between SalesLogix and Microsoft Outlook. So let me switch over to my Outlook software. Everybody's familiar with Outlook. And what we could see here is a typical Outlook 2007 or 2010 system, but LinkPoint does add some functionality to Outlook. Uh, there are three components to the Outlook integration. One is the email integration. So when I send and receive emails from Microsoft Outlook, I could save them back into SalesLogix and associate them with an account, a contact, an opportunity, or even a custom uh, table. We could also bi-directionally synchronize your calendars, your contacts, and your tasks between Outlook and SalesLogix. So if I create an appointment in SalesLogix, it will get synchronized over to my uh, Outlook. If I create an appointment in, in Outlook, it will get synchronized over to my SalesLogix. The third component is the link point view panel. And you can see that here on the right side of my screen. And what that really is is a view of all the SalesLogix information for the currently selected email contact or lead. So in this case, the email came from Fred Johnson. LinkPoint knows this came from Fred Johnson. So we query SalesLogix for everything about Fred Johnson. We find his contact information, we find his account information, his phone numbers, his email addresses, and then all the tabs below the header information here is all the related data from SalesLogix for Fred Johnson. I can look at our meeting histories, I could look at our emails that we've communicated back and forth with that are stored in SalesLogix. I could see what opportunities. I could see support tickets. I could see tasks. Or even your custom uh, information. So if you had a table of orders, let's for example, you could see the orders for that particular company, Insight Computers, or for Fred Johnson. So it's very customizable. And ISM could really handle that for you. Now, not only can I view that information, but LinkPoint allows you to actually act upon it. So as I'm looking through my information, if I double click any entry here below a tab, you will see information a little bit more in depth of what you can see in the summary. So in this case, I could see there's more information about the summary, uh, about a particular opportunity, but I could also look at all the opportunities and I could page through them. And where that really is helpful sometimes is on the email tab. You know, if we have a lot of emails stored in SalesLogix, I could page through. I could page through them all and find the one that's relevant to the question I might have been asked or a piece of information I'm looking for. So it's very valuable. So not only can I quickly look at that information, but there's many times we need to actually go to the particular record in SalesLogix. Um, maybe I got an email from Fred Johnson that says, "Can you please update my phone number because I moved my office." Well, in order to do that, rather than opening up SalesLogix, searching for Fred Johnson, clicking Edit, what we'll do is anywhere you see the SalesLogix logo, you could click on that logo, and we'll open up that particular record for you inside of SalesLogix. So if I want to open up Fred Johnson's contact record, I could click this icon right here, and we'll open up Fred Johnson's contact record in SalesLogix. I could then update the phone number, or whatever I need to do with it, Click Save, and if I come back to my Outlook and I refresh my link point view panel by clicking the little icon here on the bottom, you can see that the phone number being displayed is now what was saved, what was saved back into SalesLogix. So the information we're displaying is real time from SalesLogix. And that works with any of the records. For example, if I need to move an opportunity from one stage to another, well, I could do that by opening up SalesLogix and searching and doing what I need to. But if I do need to open up quickly, of course, I click the icon. We'll open up the opportunity. I can move the stage uh, to the next stage, save it, and that's all I would have to do. So you could see how more productive a user can be by using the link point tool. So not only can you open up SalesLogix, get to the data, update it, but we also allow you to do other functions or productivity features. For example, if, I, if I'm traveling out to meet Fred, I could click on Google Drive and directions, 
and we'll give you driving directions to that uh, location. Or if I happen to use Skype in my office, we can use Skype to dial a phone number or some other voice over IP uh, phone system that we do support. Uh, there's also many times you might receive an email from an individual that says, can you send me a quote or I'm interested in purchasing uh, you know, your services or your product. Well, in that case, I could also create an opportunity directly from the link point panel. So anywhere you see the little plus sign here will allow you to create a new opportunity for Fred Johnson by just clicking the plus sign. I go in here. I'll open up a new opportunity screen in Sales Logics. You can see that it's pre-populated with you know, a lot of the information that needed, the contacts. I could give it a, uh, the description's already there. I could say save. That new opportunity is now inside of Sales Logics. So if I happen to refresh my screen once again, you can see there are now three opportunities being displayed. Now, as I change to a different email, for example, right now I have Fred Johnson selected. If I click on Jake Smith's email record, you'll notice that LinkPoint automatically refreshes itself to find the contacts or leads based upon that new email that was selected. So in this case, it came from Jake Smith. LinkPoint automatically refreshes to show you all the information from Jake Smith. And all the related data is specific to Jake's record. Now, if I click to another email, for example, from Michael James, you can see that LinkPoint tells the user that we can't find anything about Michael James inside of sales logics. And the next logical thing for a typical salesperson would be to go create that new contact inside of sales logics. And every salesperson I know, including myself, hates typing in every all the fields or hates uh, copying and pasting every field in to create a new contact. So one of the productivity features that we have available is the ability to highlight an email signature. Once it's highlighted, I can actually drag and drop that I could drag and drop it down to this icon here on the bottom. And I think I might have missed. Sorry. Let me drag it and drop it again. There we go. And you can see that what LinkPoint will do is open a new contact account form inside of SalesLogix, pre-populating the information the best we can. The user can now verify the data, make sure everything's there. Maybe a piece of it might be missing because it wasn't part of his email signature. Everything looks OK. I could click Save. And I just created that new contact inside of Sale Logics. So if I refresh here, you can see Michael James is now found because we just created him as a contact inside of Sale Logics. So you could see even creating contacts, we're trying to streamline that capability to make it easier and want users to actually do that because the more they use the CRM, you know, we're trying to increase that CRM adoption, make it more valuable. And by having all the contacts in sales logic and, and being able to see all the related data instantly makes that more valuable to each of the users of sales logic. Now that, that's the link point view panel, which is really there for productivity purposes. Now the next component of the, of the integration is the email integration. Um, we want to get as much history or as much uh, communication history back into sales logics and associate it with the contacts, accounts, opportunities, cases, or support tickets, or the related data that you might have. And there's different ways we could do that. The first way is by clicking the record to sales logics icon or button here on the toolbar. And when I do that, LinkPoint will open up a new window and suggest the best way to record it. Let me just choose an email from Fred Johnson uh, as my sample data. Now, this email from Fred Johnson, I want to record back into Sales Logics. So LinkPoint knows the email came from Fred Johnson, so it's suggesting us to record it to Fred Johnson. It also is showing us other information that we could associate the email to. For example, I could associate it to an opportunity, a ticket, or these other opportunities or tickets. So at this point, I can make a determination. Do I record it to an opportunity, or do I leave it at the Fred Johnson level? In this case, I'm going to leave it at the Fred Johnson contact level. It also, LinkPoint will also sh allow us to create a follow-up task or appointment. 
Now, the reason for that is we feel that many times when you receive an email, it might prompt a task or appointment to follow up that with that contact. I might have received an email from Fred that says, can you give me a call tomorrow to discuss pricing? Well, rather than recording the email and then creating an appointment as second, a as second process, we're trying to streamline this once again. So in this case, I could actually create an appointment for Fred Johnson. I could choose tomorrow if I want. Of uh, call to discuss pricing. So what's going to happen is once I click the record now, the email will be saved to Fred Johnson's contact record, as well as a new appointment will be created for Fred Johnson inside of SalesLogix. And then if, once we synchronize, it will be in my Outlook. So once I click record now, the email is saved, the appointment, uh, the appointment is created. We also flag the email as being saved back into sales logics with the category of CRM. And you can see that on my screen. So when I'm looking at my inbox or my sent folder, I will know which emails were saved in sales logics and which ones were not. If I click over to my email tab, well, I'm sorry, we are my email tab. Once I refresh my email tab, there are nine emails right now. But once I refresh, you can see there are 10 there now. And this final approval for private placement, this top one, is the one that we just saved back into SalesLogix. If I click on my meeting tabs, there's a new meeting here called follow-up email, final approval, and the subject is um, it's the call, uh, call to discuss pricing. So that meeting was also created in SalesLogix. But of course, if I need to, I can always see that information inside of SalesLogix. I don't always have to look at the link point view panel. Um, that same information uh, this is for Fred Johnson. If I happen to look at my calendar uh, for the week, let me see. Tomorrow is Wednesday. You can see for Fred Johnson, 3 to 3.15. That's the uh, appointment for tomorrow. So in inbound email, it's very straightforward. An outbound email to save back into sales logics is just as straightforward as recording an inbound email. I could do a reply to an email. I could compose a new email. Let me just bring that over from my other screen. And in order to compose this email, I'll do it as I normally would. Uh, I could type in an email address. I could use my local address book from Outlook. I could um, just type, uh, do a reply. We also have something called a sales logics address book. And all this does is it allows me to look up a contact or lead from SalesLogix and use them as a recipient. And the reason I would do this is just because I might not know someone's email address. So if I didn't know Fred Johnson's email address, I could, of course, always look it up and just select them and click OK. There's no difference between that or me typing in someone's email address. I'm going to uh, call this test outbound email. This is a test. And if this is an email that I want to send, Let's save it back into SalesLogix. I'm going to use my Send and Record button here on the toolbar. Now, when I click on that, once again, it's going to come back with that very familiar interface for the user and suggest how, sh how it should be recorded back into SalesLogix. Once again, I'm going to let it record to Fred Johnson. I'm not going to create a follow-up opportunity or a follow-up task or appointment this time. I'm going to click the Record Now button. The email is sent and saved back into SalesLogix. If I come back to my email tab and I click refresh, there should be 11 of them. And here's my test outbound email. So recording an outbound email is just as simple as recording an inbound email. If there were attachments on that email, those attachments are also stored in SalesLogix if you choose to. And you can turn which ones should be saved and which ones should not be saved. So it's a very thorough uh, type of recording of emails back into SalesLogix. And that kind of brings us into the final component, which is really the synchronization of your calendars, contacts, and tasks. Now, I'm going to go through each one of them and kind of explain the functionality and how it works and how it's kind of very tightly integrated. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is compose a new calendar entry, or a new meeting, I should say. So if I click on New Meeting, I'm going to, I'm going to actually invite Fred Johnson. Um, meet to discuss pricing, actually discuss 
opportunity, just so we know it's a different one. I'm going to make it for I'm going to make it for tomorrow. And I'll make it for four o'clock to four thirty. But you also will notice that there is a new little section on the top of my calendar entry. And this is where you can associate disappointment with a record inside of SalesLogix. Now, if I click the unassigned hyperlink here, what we're going to do is we're going to, based upon who are the, who are the invitees of the email, we're going to suggest the best way to assign it or associate it in, in SalesLogix. In this case, I want to associate it with Fred Johnson, so I could just look, click OK. And now my email, I'm sorry, my calendar entry, when it synchronizes over to SalesLogix, this calendar entry will be associated with Fred Johnson's the contact record. So I'm just going to click Save, or I mean, I'm sorry, Send, as I normally would. And that meeting is saved inside of Outlook. Now, I'm going to run the synchronization process manually, which means I'm going to do it now and I'm not going to do it behind the scenes. However, typically the synchronization process can be run automatically behind the scenes so there's no user interface. So I could be working in Outlook or I could be working in SalesLogix and none of that, mat all, none of that uh, data, well actually all the data between both systems will automatically synchronize between both uh, Outlook and SalesLogix without me even knowing. So in this case, I'm going to do it manually and we're going to see a lot of screens. And the screens that we look at now would not appear if it was being done automatically. So I'm just going to do it manually so you can see exactly how LinkedIn is thinking. The first screen that comes up <coughs> excuse me, is the calendar summary screen. The left side represents SaleLogix and the right side represents Microsoft Outlook. The appointment here on the left was the appointment we created in SalesLogix when I was recording that email into SalesLogix. It was for tomorrow to call about pricing. And LinkPoint knows that this was in SalesLogix, but we couldn't find an associated appointment in Outlook, so we're, we're going to create it in Outlook. And you can see that because there's a plus sign with an arrow pointing to the right. The second appointment here is the meeting we just created in Outlook. There was no associated appointment in SalesLogix, so we're going to create that appointment inside of SalesLogix. All I do is click OK. The two appointments are created in the corresponding system and it's going to move on to my contacts. In this case, it found three contacts in SalesLogix that do not exist in Outlook, so it's going to add those contacts in Outlook, and it's found one contact in Outlook which did not find inside of SalesLogix. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to synchronize them, and it's going to move on to tasks. The first item was found in SalesLogix. It was not found in Microsoft, so it's going to add it to my uh, Outlook. These other items on the bottom were found in Outlook. They were not found in SalesLogix, so we're going to create them in SalesLogix. I click OK. The appointments are created, and it's all done. Now, the screens that we just saw would not appear during a typical synchronization in a automatic, if it was being done automatically. If I happen to look at my Outlook now, you can see tomorrow there's a uh, meet to discuss opportunity. Uh, here's my follow-up email, which allowed, which we actually created inside of SalesLogix that came over to my Outlook. And when it comes over to Outlook, you can see from the calendar entry here who it's associated with, which contact and which account, which is very useful because now when I'm looking at appointments, I know who they're with. If I happen to change this uh, appointment from uh, Wednesday to Thursday, the next time I synchronize, this appointment will be moved from Wednesday to Thursday inside of SalesLogix as well. So that's really the overall components of the link point integration with SalesLogix. Uh, our goal is to really bring out functionality where SalesLogix typical Outlook integration might uh, leave off or end or where, however you want to call it. So what we do is we're doing what they do better and also adding another component which makes you more, pro more productive and increases CRM adoption. 
So that's really the, um, the overview of the LinkPoint product. Now, uh, I'm not sure, Brian or um, Bryce, if you want to maybe open up for questions that someone might have, specific questions. Yeah, that would be great if you're, if you're good with that, Glenn. I, that's really what we like to do in these Lunch and Learns. So Absolutely. That's, that's perfect. Any, does anybody have questions? They're stunned. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Christine. They have already been addressed, but um, does it work with the LAN client also? It, it does work with the LAN client, yes. Okay, great. Um, one of the, yes, it does. I'm sorry. I, just, I, I thought there was another question. There are, there are so many other little features for everybody. You know, as you go through it, you're going to find a lot of functionality that you won't even know that was there. You know, if I have multiple, for example, if I have multiple emails from an individual, I can highlight them all, say record to sales logics, and what it's going to do is record all three of them at the same time. So I could just instantly record all the emails right into sales logics for all the ones I have. So if I have a folder of emails from John Doe that over the last year, I can highlight them all and it'll just all get recorded back into sales logics. Um, one of the other little key productivity productivity features is if I'm on a particular email from a uh, from Fred Johnson and I want to record this email to Fred Johnson's contact record, there's a little envelope over here that says quick record this email. So if I need to record this email to Fred Johnson without opening up any user interface, I could just click on it and it records the email to Fred Johnson. If I happen to be looking at an opportunity for Fred Johnson and I want to record the email to the opportunity, to a specific opportunity, I could just click on the email icon on that particular opportunity and it will record it to that opportunity and to Fred Johnson. So there are a lot of other functionality and features that your users might be able to take advantage of. Hey, hey Glenn, follow up on Christine's question. Um, what's, what are our version requirements right now? I know the, the, the current version uses web. Are we at 7.5? Do we need to be at 7.5.3 or what, what are our version requirements? You do need, uh, I think it's 7.5, you do need 7.5.3. I think the network yeah. is 7.5.3 as well. So there really isn't much, you do need 7.5.3 because we do take advantage of, and I might be getting technical, sales logics, sales logics S data, and some yep. of the new uh, functionality in there. Uh, in regards to Outlook, we support 2007, 2010. We'll support either 32 or 64-bit Outlook or 32 or 64 bit windows as well. Great. If you happen to run, if you happen to be using Citrix, um, some organizations do, and you happen to be running Outlook inside of Citrix, we will also support that as well. Excellent. Great. Any other questions? Could you go into a little more detail about the um the uh, compatibility of a, a VoIP system. You mentioned that you do support it. What else besides just being able to kind of click on a hyperlink um, could be done? Most of it right now is just the hyper. I thought you were going to say which ones do we support. Most of them are just, um, most of the functionality we do support is really just click to call. It's not really gotcha. much more than that. Um, the only other functionality, we don't have, actually it's not in here, but we could add the functionality with just an icon. Um, we could even add an icon here that says log a call. So if I happen to be on an email from Fred Johnson and I call them, there could be an icon here that says log a call, and we'll open up the log a call window inside of Sales Logics. But that's not really anything to do with VoIP. It's just something to do with you know making a call. Gotcha. And you did mention uh, what 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 kind of systems do uh, you support for the VoIP compatibility? Uh, there's three or four of them: uh, Skype, Vonage. M5 Networks and CUDATEL, which I think is Barracuda, I think. Excellent. If you have a specific voice over IP, you can let us know about it. Um, we also support Ring Central. Uh, most of the voice over IP networks have a, um, a URL that you can use to do a click to call. If that's mm -hmm. the case, we can easily add another one to it as needed. Gotcha. Any chance that that would also work in Citrix? Uh, 
Yes, it probably would. And the reason for it is the way it works is the voice over IPs most have click to calls. And what it does is you pass the parameters to the URL. And that voice over IP system first will call you. And once you confirm, it will call the, you know, the I'm going to call it the recipient or the, the other person on the other line of the phone. So really, that's the way the voice over IP will work. So it should work properly. This is Cheryl. It shows me as Lex, but Cheryl with the um, Washington Restaurant Association. Is this a service that runs on the server like you're, um, like we have an exchange environment here? With then, would we have to install client files on each of the workstations and our remote users? How does? Can you walk through like an overview level of the installation? Yep. The the LinkPoint software is a desktop application. It doesn't get installed on the server doesn't get installed on the um, Exchange server at all. So it's only a desktop installation. The installation is very simple. It takes, I'm going to say, two, maybe two or three minutes to install. If I, let me just see, I could probably find a quick, we have a tutorial that will show you um, how simple it is. Let me, I'll show it to you real fast. This is a just as an installation tutorial. So you'll see as I go through it, it's next, 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 <laughs> next. This is where the user will put in his or her credentials. So they're going to put in their you know license information here, which is very you know, straightforward. This is where we can put the sales logic server we need to connect to, and. Um, and, you know, Bryce and his team will be able to tell you how that gets set. Um, how, what sales logic client you're using, whether it's the network, remote, or browse, browser. And that's really about it. So that's okay. the whole configuration setting. I mean, the installation whole process. Is that kind of... Yeah, so no, that's what I needed to know. Okay. <laughs> so it is uh, quite simple. Okay. And I, I did mention this earlier. Um, one of the features, even in the link point panel here on the right, is you could have, if you have custom objects um, in your system, for example, orders, uh, account, um, maybe inventory or something, whatever it might be. <laughs> Excuse me. That could be displayed here as a tab. And when you display that information, you're going to display the information in here based upon what you need to display. So Bryce and Brian and the whole team will say, okay, you know, there's an order table that we would like to display. This could be a new tab called order. You specify, you know, they'll be able to design it to show the information from that custom table of what you really need displayed. And that becomes very useful because then I could see quickly from Fred John if I'm looking at a Fred Johnson record, I can see what orders or what products he might have already owned or licenses he might have. So there's everything that you you know that you would need could be available right within your uh, Microsoft Outlook. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions? All right, Glenn. Well, thank you very much. That was awesome. I always forget how awesome LinkPoint is, even though I use it all the time. There's stuff that I forget it does. Um, and um, for the, those of you that have been using SalesLogix for a long time or even a short period of time, uh, it's kind of almost interesting to imagine for some of your users that that or either light users or don't like getting into the CRM, kind of allows them to do more directly 
at, at the Outlook level without having to um, necessarily launch SalesLogix all the time, but allow us to keep our data integrity at the SalesLogix level good. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, and also for things like right now, SalesLogix doesn't support 64-bit uh, Outlook 2010. Uh, and so if you would like to go to that or you're looking to go to that and you're held off, uh, link point is a good solution to, to get around uh, that that shortfall right now on the sales logic side. So it's a really powerful tool. And like Glenn said, the ability to show the right information you need at the right time in the tabs uh, becomes very powerful. So uh, if this is uh, something you're interested in, please contact uh, myself or Robert Fieros or even Scott Small, Smallback on our team. And we can either get you a more, more specialized direct demo um, and, uh, and talk about uh, if it's a good fit for you or not.